So we're now talking about uh, unit four, the adjectives, okay? We finally get real adjectives. So just to review the concept of an adjective, um, uh, for example, the, the book uses the Greek word for good, okay? So there's a difference between a, a book and a good book, okay? A, an adjective is a, a word like good that modifies, that is, it qualifies a noun. It gives you, uh, it restricts its, its uh, function. It makes it less general and more specific. So um, in, in Greek, we already had an adjective, actually, and it's the definite article. Ha, he, ta. And it has all the all the cases and all the genders of a, of a noun because the rule in Greek is that an adjective like ha, the, agrees with its noun. Agrees means has the same gender, number, and case of the noun that it applies to. So that's the way adjectives work in a Greek sentence. It's not that they come next to it. That's the way it works in English. It's the, book, the good book would come right in front of it. Um, but in Greek, it can come before it or after it and be separated from the noun by a word or two even. Mm -hmm. And you can always tell because which, which noun it goes with because they have to agree in gender, number, and case. Okay, So that means we have to, uh, how do you make the standard adjective? That's what we're, we're seeing. And what Lucy's written up on the, on the green board there is the, the adjective agathos. That means good. It gives us the English name Agatha, right? A good girl. <laughs> <laughs> um, and and you, if you look at the forms, okay, they're going to look very familiar to you. I got thos, I got thu. I'm looking at the masculine ones and in, in the singular, right? I got thos, I got thu, I got tho, I got thon, and I got tha, That's identical to the inflection of the noun, standard noun of the second declension logos, right? When it comes to the to the yes, but notice the accent, okay? At least he put up little stars for you, okay? Notice that in the genitive and in the dative of all these forms, and it works for the singular as well as the plural. What's an acute accent in the nominative and the accusative becomes a circumflex, right? This is a rule in Greek. Okay, so when I, if you look at the feminine of agathos, okay, it's agathe, agathes, agathe, agathane. That's the same as techne, technes, techne, technane. And the neuter of agathos is agathon, agathu, agatho, agathon, which is exactly like the inflection of doron or. Um, what's the what's the standard neuter noun that we ergon. use? Ergon. Ergon, the word mm -hmm. for deed. Okay, so so what you've done is you've ta taken the endings of first and second declension nouns. Whoops, we lost the light here. Hold on. <laughs> Just there we go. Um, wait, you only got the top part, not the bottom. Mm -hmm. Not right. <laughs> I think if you just sent there, nope, still, it's still, uh, all right, oh well. all right, we'll, we'll, we'll make do, we'll get a little more close, okay, you yeah, know, the camera's adjusted, all right, so, um, where was I? Uh, just like Ergon. Just like Ergon, so, so if you think about this, what's happened is, in order to create a standard form of an adjective, Greek has taken the the masculine declension, logos type nouns, the feminine declension, techne type nouns, and the neuter declension, ergon type nouns. These are the these are living uh, the living classes of nouns, the nouns of the first declension and second declension, and made an adjective by taking their endings on it. So we're not showing you the plural, but they're totally predictable. In other words, the plural of the masculine of agathos is just like the plural of logoi, and the plural of the feminine of agathos is just like techne. The plural of techne, and so forth. Okay. And the accents in the genitive and the dative in the plural are also going to be circumflexes. Circumflexes, right? Um, so, so I think there's not something new to learn here. It's a way, a, a kind of review. Okay. And I hope the idea makes sense to you. It's systematic, right? Mm -hmm. You can see how it works. So let's move on, because we have a um, epsilon iota rho variance for feminine nouns. The same thing happens with adjectives. There are adjectives in which the vowel before the, the feminine uh, form is a, an iota, an epsilon, or a rho. And what happens then is the same thing as happens in chora and agara. 
that is, the forms that you see in Tecne, which have an eta, didn't turn into an eta. They stayed as long alphas. So we put on the white on the green board there oxios, a word that an, an adjective, excuse me, that means worthy or worthwhile. Okay. Um, generally, it means worthy of something in Greek. So you give a value to it, worthy of ten. 10 uh, cows, or worthy of esteem, okay? Something with a genitive noun, okay? Um, it's about value and worth. But it has an iota before the uh, declensional ending of the noun, the alpha or the eta. So that keeps those long alphas in the inflection. So that instead of being like agathe, Agathes, agathe with the iota subscription, agathe, and you get axia, 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 Okay, not surprising either, right? We're again seeing how language works as a system, and it's got consistency across these things. All right, the last thing we want to teach you about adjectives is this: that this is a very beautiful thing that you've got masculine adjectives, feminine forms of the adjective, and neuter forms of the adjective. But I think we said to you before that in the language from which Greek is descended, in Indo-European, there was no separate masculine or feminine. There were two gender categories. There was the things that are alive mm -hmm. and the things that are not. So it's not the things that are dead. It means things like a book is not a living thing, okay, um, or a chair. But uh, a, a person it, or an animal or stuff like that, those are living things. So the original contrast was between animate and inanimate. But Greek, along with almost every other language in the Indo-European family, developed a feminine gender as opposed to a masculine one. However, uh, this is a fairly, fairly recent development in Greek. And, um, and there, are, there are some adjectives that predate, uh, whose forms predate the, the creation of a separate feminine gender form. So what you get is this weird thing that you see on the white on, on the green board there, adikos, okay, with the adjective that means unjust. So you, you have one form, as you can see what Belisi has done, she's put m slash f over it. The forms of the that look like the forms of logos, adikos, adiku, adiko, adikon, and adika the vocative, are either masculine or feminine. Okay. Um, so there's no separate feminine form to, that's distinct. Is the masculine form can be either masculine or feminine. Um, the neuter is the way neuters work in the, in the declension of the adjectives and the nouns of the second declension of the ergon type, so there's nothing special there. But the, And the only thing that's weird about this is there is no feminine form, and the form that looks masculine is used for both masculine and feminine. Mm -hmm. We haven't put the plural up because the plural forms are the same. Um, and there's nothing, no feminine plural forms right. specifically either. Okay?